I'm here with Melbourne analyst Trevor Lawson. How are you going, Trev? Good, Mark. Good. So you uh, you pumped up for twilight racing at Flemington tomorrow? Uh, well, I wouldn't exactly say that. It's just how do you fill in your time till <laughs> three o'clock in the afternoon? Yeah, if you had to do some more form, that'd be fun. Oh well. I mean, <laughs> sometimes at eight o'clock I'm asleep, so uh, <laughs> we're still got a race. So fair enough. Um, yeah, any particular races tomorrow that um, caught your uh, caught your fancy? So uh, far? it's actually you know uh, not a bad meeting. Um, yep. We sort of just haven't finalised at all, but there's some reasonable quality horses um, yep. for this time of year um, going around. So I think we've just had that little break from sort of the end of spring to sort of now, and um, this meeting um, and the next one should be okay. And then you've got you know Boxing Day and then News Day, and then yep. it starts to sort of get a bit better again. So mm-hmm. good stuff. Yeah, we just have that sort of three week period where it's um, a bit thin. Mm. And also coming once Christmas finishes, you know, the the um, Friday night meeting stop for sort of three or four weeks. Yep. So hopefully we start to get a bit of, um, um, you know, thickness in the fields and um, mm. because they've just been really thin lately. And then with this POC, you know, just everything's, you sort of, you think I like it, I like it, but I'm not taking those odds, I'm not yep. taking those odds. Yep. And as we've seen over the last few days, you know, some have won, but some get beat. Yeah. So, um, yeah, you've just got to, you just got to ride it out and wait. Yeah. But, um, yeah, it's, um, there's a couple of, um, you know, the quaddy leg races are, um, yep. not bad. So in race six, uh, I'll make sure knees at the top of the field. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So he, he, she's a, um. Uh, we got a good result back in her um, cup day. Um, she just flies yeah. at Flemington. She's just a Flemington horse. Yeah. Uh, the other day at Mini Valley, she got too far back. And I'd say it was, knowing now that it's in, in this race over 1800, it was probably just the run that the stable wanted to have, yep. you know, coming from cup day to sort of here, which yep. is sort of six weeks or something. So, um, yeah, I thought it's... Uh, Extremely hard to beat, and also Talente, mm. which um, was sort of hurt on the grapevine. Uh, if it won last, that was going to be sold to Hong Kong. So, um, it, and I don't think it was originally going to run in this race. So, right. um, it may come out, it may not, but um, I basically thought it's still on the improve. 1800 look on the big track. You know, idea for it, so I thought they were clearly the two horses to beat. Mm. Yeah, yeah, the market seems to have it that way as well. They're fairly, uh, fairly tight at the top of the market, and then yeah, it sort of blows out after that a bit. Yeah, I think I oh, Tordo's in the market, yep. and um, it was sort of good first up, uh, behind um, Harbour Skies, and then um, at Flemington. It, was so so, and then the other day at Ballarat, it was pretty poor with the blinkers on. Yeah. Um, so it's actually going up in trip, which I thought really probably wasn't a positive. Yeah. It's taking the blinkers off it, but um, I was sort of prepared to go around it. So mm. yeah, I thought um, Shawnee and Talente were clearly the first, you know, the top two picks in the race. Yeah, yeah. the markets found them, but yeah. you know. Um. And in race seven, um, we've got a fairly short favourite in Defibrillate, uh, which is about two dollars eighty at the moment. So there's been a bit of money for that early by the looks of it. Uh, yeah, it seems um, really short odds to me. Yeah, um, I had uh, one four in a row, and then it got beat at Ballarat. It got beat by Credence. Got beat on its merits. Credence come from behind it and beat it. Mm. Um, to me, you know, I've got a double figures. Right. I was really surprised that it was that sort. Um, Paul Vu was terrific two starts ago, and then we were on it the other day. Um, it might have just been the flat run waiting to come to here for, you know, the better prize money. Yeah. So I was thinking it would bounce back. Um, I think it's at least the equal of defibrillate and it's getting weight off it so mm. I've got it shorter than it um, Heart of Grace uh, has been disappointing but 
the market keeps wanting to be on at every start and it did work home all right the other day so with sort of genuine speed it had some hope um, but and then I thought there was a few roughies in the race El Dom had some hope yep um, Sukut I'm not 100% about it I think it might have a bit of um, meow in it mm. he looked to turn it up the other day and it goes to 2500 so um, but yeah I just saw it per poor verse it'll race up on the speed and um <coughs> excuse me the other one will get back on the inside and um i thought it was a good opportunity to get near beat yeah it looks like uh, some, a little bit of value there around the pavement by the sounds of it mm. stuff um and race eight um kicker hastings for anthony friedman's um 360 at the moment um and it, yeah a bit of a gap there to uh to Ginger Jones and then uh, Smart Alyssum. Uh, what about, what are your yeah, thoughts? Yeah, it's, <clears throat> um, I want to have a, sort of another look at this race again, but uh, you've sort of got uh, Smart Alyssum, um, Eagle Ridge, Inter mm. Rio, uh, and the close are all resuming. Um, <clears throat> though I think the close is in tonight, so he'll probably come out. Right. Um, I think he'd accept it. Um, King of Hastings is probably the horse to beat, but it's been a bit disappointing. Um, goes down the straight, which it sort of don't think it's been down. Uh, no, it's never been down the straight. Um, I've got it favourite, but sort of, you know, each way odds. Yeah. Um, Smart Listens first up, but its best form was um, 1,400 and sort of off a run or so. Uh, Tisha Blinders was good the other day. Uh, Eagle Ridge goes okay fresh. Ginger Jones was okay. So, yeah, it's outside the favourite. You know, basically, haven't got much between about seven other horses. Yeah, right. Okay. Yeah. So, it's so you're yeah. willing to tighten that one up a little bit? Yeah, I just want to have another look and just, um, yeah, just with the horses first start, just have another sort of look at those. No worries. And the lucky last over 1400. Um, so the market seems to have it down to two, which is uh, Morrissey for the Corstens and uh, Bumper Blast for for Hickmott. Um, what are your thoughts? Uh, yeah, I've got uh, those two and also East India Man. Yep. Um, interesting that Williams Road, Morrissey, sorry, Williams Road, Bumper Blast. Mm. Uh, it's previous two starts and he's not riding it here yep which suggested to me maybe that <clears throat> um, he'd already booked been booked for Morrissey and maybe bumper blast wasn't coming here yeah um, that's what I thought you know I just think because you know I don't think there's much between them um, so whether bumper blast runs from 13 I'm not sure uh, and the other one was um, uh, East India man yeah um, it was good two starts ago and then the other day was sort of disappointing but sort of, sort of half sort of can f forgive it yep. um, gets the apprentice jockey on but it's got you know some hope at odds uh, Nodio race as well um, and um that's sort of about it. And then they sort of get wide out from that. Mm. It seems like there's possibly a bit of value in a few races. Yeah, and there's a couple of other early races. Um, yep. There's a good uh, three and four year old race with um, race three. Yep. With um, Living the Dream, it was yep. super impressive with the blinkers on at Mooney Valley. Uh, Sovereign Award. Um, the bottom one, Westbrook Park, was impressive at Mooney Valley. And Dogmatic won well uh, last prep mm. and trialled nicely leading into this. So um, I was looking forward to sort of getting stuck right into that race. I thought it was a good race. And race four, um, the unbeaten Tycoon Bella ran very, uh, sort of led all the way on the bias track Ballarat Cup day, mm. but it did run very fast time and walked in, even though it was sort of big odds. Um, and you got Samales, 
um, who they always want to back, and uh, it goes to 1400 for the first time. Um, and a couple of others, St. Joey's ran fast time, winning a maiden. Um, so I thought it was um, not a bad sort of three-year-old. You know, it's a three-year-old benchmark. 70, so they're yeah. better quality horse, you know, we're just, you know, these Wednesday meetings, and I really seem to get in maidens and 64s. Yep. Um, so here we've got, you know, some horses have won a couple of races, mm. and uh, or they've been in, you know, won one race, but on the race they've won, they've been really impressive, so they look sort of progressive types. Mm. So, um, yeah, it's just amazing that, um, you know, all of a sudden, the money's the prize money's one hundred and twenty five to one hundred thirty five thousand, and the fields improve. <laughs> it's yeah, funny it's how it works. Science, it's it? funny how it works like that. So. <laughs> Good stuff. All right. Well, sounds like there's a few interesting races. So I look forward to seeing the prices. Yeah, yeah. Well, hopefully, we can get stuck into a few races and uh, have yeah. a good day. You like the valley tonight as well. Uh, the valley tonight. Yeah, the rail's out four meters. Uh, so traditionally uh when it's out four meters that um, it's pretty much on pace um so i'm sort of just going to finalize those this morning and those prices will be out for two o'clock and yeah, hopefully we can take advantage now that one of the big players might have left left <laughs> <laughs> and uh i think sunday's bendigo so sunday's bendigo yeah so, so I, I have, yeah well yeah i haven't had much of a chance to look at um the provincials today or tomorrow um just with christmas and mm. so other things going on um but they are and they're low grade things but yeah i'm looking to sort of have a look at um probably tomorrow's provincial tomorrow night possibly and also um bendigo on sunday and um yeah, once they um, Christmas, just after the Christmas thing, the you know, traditionally there's some meetings at um, Geelong and uh, Warnable and those sort of meetings, and um, they up the prize money a bit, and they tend to be better quality. Yeah. It's just lately they've just been, they've just you know they're basically all just fifty eights and eighties, yep. and they're poor quality. Yeah. And when you're trying to sort of price them, it's well, you know what rating do I put in for this horse? It's ratings are all over the place. Yeah, yeah. You know? yeah. And that's why you get some win at, um, you know, what price they should be and other things win at 20 to 1, you know, because yeah. they're the type of races they are. So it's just, you know, best to just avoid them. But, yeah, so we've got, a, yeah, we've got some more racing coming up where things have got a bit more form behind them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Good stuff. All right. Well, um, yeah, look forward, as I said, we're... Big Valley tonight and uh, Flemington tomorrow. So, good luck for the weekend. Great, thanks, man.